I'm glad that justice is finally starting to prevail, but it's just starting. That is Quadron Wilson's father this afternoon after he found out an agent with the Wisconsin Department of Justice was charged in the shooting that injured his son. Mark Wagner is now facing one count of second degree recklessly endangering safety by use of a dangerous weapon. Wagner made his initial appearance in Dane County Court this morning. He's free on a signature bond and is due back in court in about a month. Wilson's family says as police shot him five times as police tried to arrest him on Madison's east side February 3rd. Today's charging documents filed against Agent Wagner are lengthy, including an interview from Wagner himself. We'll break down what investigators believe happened in just a few minutes, but what we can tell you is Wagner said he thought Wilson was shooting at him. A f the family at the center of all of this has mixed emotions about today's news. Quadron Wilson's father has some strong thoughts about what we learned and what we haven't. Our Catherine Merck spoke with them today and she has more on what they want moving forward. This shouldn't have never happened, period. Quadron Wilson's family and supporters consider Agent Mark Wagner's felony charge as a step toward justice, but not far enough. Even though this is some semblance of a victory, it's not a complete victory as a whole. Wilson's shooting drew protests, marches, and rallies, but those largely fizzled out as the investigation dragged on over months. It's just starting, and there's a lot to know and a lot to learn, like I say, so, so this never happened to any individual anymore. They say what's happened to their son and their whole family put everything on pause. He's been put on hold since everything happened, since he got shot in the hospital, in jail, in prison, and that's just the way it's been. The same thing I said since the beginning of everything that happened. Wilson has been recovering in custody and will stay there for a while. He's sentenced to three years in prison for unrelated drug charges. Meanwhile, his family says they're left sitting with their own pain too. So everybody's on paid, paid leave for all this time, and we suffered all this time. Still suffering. Still suffering. That was Catherine Merck reporting. Court records filed today reveal much more than we knew before about what happened in the critical moments of the shooting. Naomi Coles joins us next. To, with the DO, uh, Naomi, is the DOJ saying anything about why one of the agents is charged? Susan, the DOJ had very little to say about the charges themselves. They wrote they didn't want to impact the case outcome. However, a spokesperson did tell me they believe this is the first time a DOJ agent has been criminally charged for use of force. Police advocates and Wagner's own attorney have not commented to me today, but Wilson's lawyer believes this will all go, this will go all the way to trial. That's what this was, chaos. Who caused the chaos? The police department. Steve Eisenberg represented Quadron Wilson in the drunk case that came out of this incident. And today, he says Mark Wagner being charged, it's only partial justice. It's not just the shooting. It's the whole plan of attack. It's the whole crazy idea that someone thought we need to assemble 21 people. The court record we have focuses on two things, DCI's use of force policy and interviews with four special agents on the scene, including Wagner and a witness. It all boils down to what happened in just a second or two of time after two squads trapped Wilson's car. Nathan Pesky followed behind Wagner, who was carrying a ballistic shield. Pesky saw what he thought was a fist, part of a gun, and then a hole shattered in the driver's window. Nearly simultaneously, Wagner says he started shooting because he thought he was being shot at. Wagner believes he fired one shot. His gun showed he fired two. Wagner fell backward. Pesky thought he had been shot, and Pesky then fired as well. Of note here, Pesky is not charged, and Wilson didn't have a gun. What's the most realistic outcome of this? And this is just a guess because I don't know what's going to happen and I don't know what the hundreds of pages of police reports might say. My guess is it goes to a trial because I think the DA's office looks weak if they charge this and then plead it out with some type of um, di diversion or they give them a misdemeanor DC. I, I don't know how they do that. Of note in all of this, Eisenberg said today that Wilson was set to see his parole officer the day after this all went down. So the big question remains, what triggered this massive, dangerous operation at a busy intersection on a workday morning? Hear more from Eisenberg Sunday morning at 1030.